guys, and welcome to my channel. This is Abby, and Abby was thick of all this long hair. Let me tell you guys, she has some hair. It is thick. She was tired of this line. It was porous. It sucked up all kinds of water. It was a lot of hair. So I cannot wait to show you the transformation that I do on Abby. So stay tuned for Hair Toots Light. Hey guys, welcome to Hair Toots Light, raw, real, and diverse hair education. I help hairstylists become better hairstylists. Okay guys, here we go, here we go. So everybody always freaks off when I cut off a lot of hair, but this is what Abby wanted. She was tired of all of this hair. She wants it gone, so I'm gonna cut it off. And I'm also not gonna color hair that I'm gonna cut off. So if you've seen any of my videos before, you know what I'm doing next. I'm gonna go ahead with the Malibu C Crystal Gel, and we probably used two packs on her hair, and there was a lot of stuff on her hair. So now I'm gonna go ahead and fill her hair, because we are going darker, guys. So I am just gonna use a little bit of like a nine RO to put back in an and then not in like an 8G to put back some missing pigments just for a couple of minutes. So as you can see, it's a little bit pink. So guys, this is like a lot of video today. So this is a haircut, a color job, and a finish job. So I, she wants a lot of layers. She wanted a lot of hair off. So just gonna go in. I did her crystal gel. I did her filler. And I didn't want to go super dark on the filler because she still wanted to maintain some of the highlights. As you can see, there was all kinds of different porosities going on in her hair. Abby's hair was quite the job. I'll just let you know today, Abby's hair is bright freaking red. So, um, but more of an RO and it's beautiful. But this was her like interim and gradual into the red colors. So again, just going ahead and cutting the perimeter of her hair. So I use these big clips because as you guys most of you guys know I have some pretty bad hand problems. So I just am going to go ahead and I use big clips because it's easier for me to open and close them than little clips. So her hair was super snarly through this whole process. I did fight with it quite a bit because there is no conditioner in here because they still had to color her hair. I just got done with the crystal gel. Her hair is super porous, super bleached, and super tangly. So Abby found me on the TikTok and she actually drove down from the Dells, which is about three and a half hours from me. And she actually drives down about every eight to 10 weeks to get her hair colored for me as well. Um, we have a little bit more to offer than the Dells do here in Schaumburg, Illinois. So she um, comes down and does some other things too. But yes, so it's always a nice time spending time with Abby. So as you can see, super snarly, super porous. We're just going to meet that side into the back area. And I am just going to allow some leverage for the shoulder as well. Sorry, I'm filming, I'm cutting, I'm doing everything myself, guys. So just going ahead and, and it's just it's just such a rough cut just to get all this stuff off. As you can see, I, I really cut some um, video out there because I was really fighting with those pieces right there. And they were just so porous. Her hair, like I can't even begin to tell you how porous Abby's hair was. And nothing can change or fix porosity except for it eventually going bye-bye. So we need to get that hair off and her hair is so much better now, now that it's been a good year since she's been coming to me. So she did want some bangs. And so we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how I fiddle around to find where I wanna place those bangs. So I kind of left all this footage in here so you can see what's going on. So I'm combing it down. I see where her hair naturally parts there at the cranial ridge. And then there's her natural part. And now I'm just kind of playing around, seeing where her hair's falling. I walk to the other side. I kind of gather that part from the other side at the top and I create a triangle and I push it and I see where that natural part is. I'm gonna bring it clear over to the other side of her hair and I am just gonna make a snip from her shortest length and you can see how it makes an angle. So again, gonna take my guide from that side, gonna bring it clear over, check my guide, and I'm gonna snip that hair off right there. 
Now I'm gonna let those hang down. It's gonna be like the perfect V from her part. And now I'm gonna take those pieces and I'm gonna blend those into the sides of the hair. And guys, I am using Hikari shears. Hikari shears are like the sharpest shears in the world. They are so sharp. It's like a hot knife through butter. So don't think that I'm like really raking on her hair. I do speed this up slightly. And now if you wanna get on the other side, just kind of dip your hand on the other way or you can come in on an angle from the bottom up or you can come in from behind. There's many ways to achieve this. Now a lot of people will say that I let go of my tension when I cut her layers. But I will say as long as your tension is put in and then you release it and your hands do not move, the tension will not move. So you'll see that coming up here in a bit. I'm just working on all that frame, face frame to make sure that the layers around the face blend in with those curtain bangs. So I do not have inspector gadget arms and so I cannot possibly cut her hair all the way up there. My chair is all the way down. And so I have to go all the way up, create my tension, and then drop it down so I can cut those pieces. My haircuts are thoroughly checked multiple times. So when I go to blow dry her hair, I'm gonna blow dry her hair horizontally and I'm gonna see if any pieces need to be trimmed off. That's mostly when I check my cut. So as you can see, I take it up, the tension is made, and then I will come down and bring it down to where I am not overextending or causing any pressure to my shoulders or neck because guys, what I don't need is another pain. So I'm just gonna pull all that up to my central guide, which is right there at the top of her head. I bring everything to that central point right there at the top of her head. That is my guide. And I'm gonna go in a pie shape around the head to that central guide. Now I am cutting off that bottom layer corner too as well. And guys, I am not a precision cutter, I am a sculptor. And so I feel the hair and I shake the hair and I look at the hair and I see what's how it's falling. See what I'm doing right there? I'm looking, I'm seeing how it's falling. I am not, I repeat, I am not a precision cutter. Although everything is extremely even, I am not like going and making tiny little sections and making sure everything's like 100% even because I'd rather cut it to the way it falls than to the way it is precisely cut on the head because that is two different things to me because if something's cut precisely to the head and then it doesn't fall right, then what the hell does it matter? It all needs to look right. It doesn't matter how it's cut as long as it looks right. It's not choppy. It's not heavy. It's feathered properly. It's tip cut right. All the things. So as you can see, everything is going to that center part of the guide. And I will preview it again. I fast forward this. I'm not beating her up. So now I am working on the other side of the head, bringing everything again to that central guide that is there on the top of the head. I will leave a little bit more allowance on the sides of the head because you only have a little bit of hair right there. Well, you have the whole back of your head on the back of your head. And then on the sides, you only have like a little bit from like your ear to the top of the head. So there's a lot less hair there. All right, guys, color time. So she wants some highlights. She wants red hair. She wants like more of a red orange, which I think suits her skin tone much better as well. So I'm gonna go ahead in and I am gonna foil these pieces in with some Magix 10, Lift 9, and 12 Volume. I did not wanna go crazy. She is a natural blonde. I'm just gonna go ahead and stick those foils in there and create a couple of foils. I am trying to utilize a lot of her blonde as well that she already has in there. I am just kind of tucking those other foils up there in there just to get the effervescence, just to open up the hair a little bit. Like I said, it's super porous. I don't wanna bring that lightener through. So just going ahead and making those bold money pieces right there in the front because she does want to see some lightness. I think it's kind of hard to kind of go from blonde to a darker color right off the bat, even though that's where she is now. So creating a veil over the top with a zigzag motion because we don't want it like super liney up there. We want it super blendy, super beautiful, super soft, no commitment. So I'm gonna take that and then I'm just gonna fold that up and I am gonna leave that top bit open because I do need to get the color in there. I'm trying to do this as, as in little steps as possible. So going ahead, 
creating some more lighter pieces. I am using my Nomad Hair Foil Board. I fold my foil over it. And I'm going in with the Magix 10, Olaplex, my Framar brush, and just feathering in those lighter pieces. And I am doing it on a horizontal because it will create more lighter effect than if I do them on a up and down motion or on an angle back or an angle forward. So just doing a deep V in the back and throwing in a couple of highlights here as well. So we're not going to do too many because she does have a lot of lightness as well. And we're just going to throw a couple here in the back. I think I do two diagonal, one straight across, and then just another straight across on the top. Really trying to keep it on the DL here, guys. Not trying to over highlight whatsoever. I do generally do some deep weaves because they do like very bold highlights and I feel that deep weaves give you more of a ribbon effect to the hair. And you will see that in the final result. So just finishing up the highlights right here on the top and then we're gonna go in with her color formula. So I am using Magix 10 10 minute color and I am using the 7.40 and 7.4 in her color formula and just applying her root using 21 volume and their developers are slightly a bit more oxygenated than um, other developers. Now I am gonna go in here and use a little bit lighter of a color on her ends. She did want a little bit of a lighter red on the end so I'm gonna go in with like an 8.4. So now I'm gonna go and take some lighter pieces and just utilize some of her already existing blonde. I'm gonna do some deep weaves and I'm gonna go in with an 8G because that's what I'm gonna tone the rest of her blondes with. So just utilizing some of that color, I'm using these extra long foam things and just kind of feathering the seven into the eight and just a little bit of a very light one, one point or 104 with a little bit of a Ronco in there and morph to make it an acidic gloss. So I got a lot of colors going on here, guys. And I do like to comb things through. I always make sure the hair is combed nice and neat first before I go and comb things through. As you can see, I'm going through the bottom to create my deep weaves and then going in with all those different colors that I mentioned before in the Magix 10 line. Guys, if you would love to try Magix 10, the link is in the description and there is a code where you can get a sample of it as well. So just going in with the two darker colors and melting those both together to create the depth behind those lighter pieces because the depth makes the light hair pop. So just going in and doing the same thing in these little foamies and just hitting those really light ends and smoothing that with the back of my hand and folding those up short and then short again creating some of those lighter pieces around the, the hairline as well and working those colors together and leaving some of those blondes right there on the ends and combing them through. break here right now so we have a little bit of my high dimension high impact 15 foil it is free it is over 30 minutes long it's all about just keeping your foils low less is more and it's free it's over 30 minutes long the link is in the description just go ahead and click the link for the free 15 foil which brings me to my next 
edition is Hair Toots. Hair Toots is going to be live soon, guys, and I'm so excited to tell you about the Neapolitan series. It is going to be three different heads, a brunette, a redhead, and a blonde, and it's going to be three awesome techniques all in one for one price, and I cannot wait for you all to see this amazing product that I put together. Now, back to the hair. So we are done with Abby's color and now I'm going to go ahead and finish that cut up. Now you can see she's got a lot of hair. So I want to lighten up those pieces on the ends and I'm just going to go in and I'm going to lighten those all up by tip cutting the hell out of them. So just go, it's so hard to cut up a straight line. So as you can see, when I cut her hair wet, I did not put in a straight line and because her hair is so thick, it will show everything. So I tried my hardest not to create any hunky, thick cuts. So now I am just going in. You can see she's still lacking up even after all the Olaplex and conditioner and everything. That's just how porous this girl's hair was. Let me tell you, her hair is not like that now. Her hair is amazing and it feels fantastic. Just adjusting that for you guys there. And so just going ahead and cutting off any corners that I see, lightening up any pieces. I run my hands through. I feel the thickness. I feel for thickness. You can see I did it right there. Like I said, I am a sculptor and I feel where the thickness is in the hair. I look for heavy spots and I just go ahead in and I just tip cut that right out her color came out so beautiful she's so happy like i love you could just see those cute little smirks she throws because she just is so happy with her color so excited that she loves it and those bangs are just face framing so beautifully so most of the time i cut the hair wet really quick and then i will dry it and then i will come in and i will cut it dry and just texturize all the pieces that i need to texturize because then you can really truly see how the hair is laying and you can see that the top piece is just not laying soft enough for me so i keep going into it wherever your last layer is is going to be where your heaviest spot is so Guys, I am going to curl her hair now, and I am going to speed this up. So this is my Babyless Pro 1 and 1 fourth inch iron, and the link is in my description in my Amazon list. And you guys can go ahead and go ahead and purchase that on my affiliate link, you know. Go ahead and give you all this great stuff. So, you know, a little kickback would be nice that 39 cents I'll get from that iron. So you can go ahead and... um. I'm going to do this on this super fast, guys, because it's kind of monotonous. But I want you guys to see how I create my curls. So I do leave it in for about five seconds in each strand, even though it's super sped up. I start curling at the base. So after this, it's going to go really fast after this section, guys. So I start at the base, and I only leave the ends in there for like a second because you want that kind of like straighter look, and you don't want to cook your ends. So the longer you leave your ends in there for, the longer it's going to cook them, and we don't want to cook the hair. Ends of your hair are older. They're more porous. They're more damaged. So the less you leave your hair in the ends of a hot curling iron, the better off you're going to be. Also, I styled her hair with Olaplex 6 and 7, and I also use Kendra. Um, it's a, it has little beads on it, and I kind of forgot the name of it, but it's a blow, it's like a spray for, um, it's a heat spray, but let me get it out, guys. It's a heat spray, and it has a little bee on the front, and it's a heat protectant as well, because I truly believe you can never have enough heat protectant in your hair, but it also acts like kind of like a hairspray, so it kind of holds that curl that you put in there. So, guys, this is coming out amazing. Wait till I flip her around and give her the fluff. It looks absolutely, just absolutely stunning and gorgeous. So I always curl the front pieces away from the hair, and guys, it is so much easier when you have a clip holding the hair out of the way so the hair isn't falling on top of everything that you are doing. Abby's hair, again, I said, is super thick, is super luscious and super beautiful. And she just loves everything about having red hair. And it looks beautiful with her eyes. So when I go to style this, I'm going to put a couple of drops of Olaplex number seven in my hands because I love to just smooth this out with just a couple of drops of Olaplex number seven, run it through her ends, give it a little fluff, and then I like to bring it all forward. And then everybody goes, ah, oh, it's so beautiful. So here comes the fluff. 
wait for it. There it is. And there's the smile that I wait for each and every time. Guys, here's the finale. If you find value in my content, please like, share, subscribe, share with your friends. Don't forget about hair toots. Don't forget about the 15 foil. Go to my description. If you guys are consumers and are interested in getting your hair done, the link to my salon is in the description as well. And guys, as I always mention, do not forget to hit the ding dong. Thanks for watching, guys. Love ya.